high. So I've been going through a pretty tough time right now, as is, you know, the rest of the world. But for me personally, it's been really hard. And um, to make a long story short, I had to go to the United States for a week and then come back, which is a whole nother headache. So if you are anytime soon looking to um, travel outside of Japan and uh, you'd like me to make a video uh, about that, I'll let you know. But um, this uh, whole situation and everything that's changing almost daily with the Ministry of Justice on who can leave and who cannot leave and how you can leave and how you come back, um, that's always changing. Um, but I thought this... What I'm going to talk about today and for the next couple days is something that um, will be set in time for now. So, and that is quarantine. So, um, I guess I'll make another video um, about how I left and how I returned to Japan during the time of COVID and went to the United States. Um, and it is possible if you have to go for an emergency. But um, what I thought I would talk about is quarantine. So when you return from Japan these days, after being abroad, um, you have to have all kinds of paperwork. The first paperwork that I had to have was a form from the Ministry of Justice that said exactly when, how, where, and who gave me my COVID test in the United States. So I had to get a... Um, test. It cost me $350 where I went to get it because you have to get the COVID test within 72 hours of your departure, which most places, at least in South Florida, where I was, um, guaranteed a two to three day turnaround. Well, three days is 72 hours. So I needed to get on a plane at seven o'clock on Sunday morning, which means after seven o'clock on Thursday was the soonest I could get a test which means if I didn't get it by the close of business day on Saturday, I was screwed. So I found a place that would give my results back in 24 to 48 hours, but it cost more. The standard price you can get one done at a local drugstore seems to be about $140 if you don't have insurance, which of course I don't have insurance in the United States right now. So I paid 300 some odd dollars to get this test done. Um, and then I had to sit with the tech and beg them to sign this form because it said that you had to have this specific form filled out by the Ministry of Justice and you couldn't come through if you did not have that particular form. Remember that detail later. So I paid for this test. I got the form. I had to go back in and sit with somebody to get this filled out. Also, I could be home for a week. Which was fun because I arrived on Tuesday, which meant I had to be back in the country Monday, which means I had to, had to leave America on Sunday, which meant that I was only in the United States for two days. On Thursday, I had to get my test, so luckily I didn't pop positive. But, got the test. Got the paper. So then, you gotta leave. Well, you have to make sure you have your re-entry permit. Now... When I used to live in Japan 20 some odd years ago, a re-entry permit was actually something you went and got and was a stamp you had to get a new one of every so often. And it had it signed in there that this was your re-entry permit. It has since transitioned over to, if you have a Zaidu card that allows you to have long-term stay, that combined with the re-entry card that you get stapled into your passport when you leave Japan is your re-entry permit. What I did not realize is that on the back of that card is a thing that looks like a stamp and that is the stamp. So I started receiving emails from the Japan Airlines office in Dallas-Fort Worth, which is where I left out of. I flew from Florida to Dallas and then out to Tokyo. I started getting emails from them going, we need to see a copy of your re-entry permit. And so I sent them a picture of my Zydeo card, my re residence card, and I said, this is it, you know, I'm, I'm a permanent resident, so I, I can go. And they said, no, 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 we have to see the stamp in your passport. And I was, I started to freak out. I'm like, I don't have a stamp on my passport. And they said, here's what it looks like. And they sent me a picture of this square. 
and I looked through all my stamps and I did not have this stamp. So I'm sitting there playing with the papers and I'm looking at my re-entry stapled in card and I flip it over and there it is on the back of the card. And I'm thinking, why didn't you just ask if I had a re-entry card stapled in my passport? Whatever, I took a picture of the back of that card because it, it literally does look like a stamp on the back of the card because Japan. And um, I took a picture of that and I sent it and they said, oh, yes, yes, that's the stamp. That's perfect. So you have your residence card, you have your stamp, you have your COVID test ready to go. So um, when I left um, Florida, they checked all my paperwork once. And then when I went to Dallas is where I had to stand in line. Now... On a flight that usually has, you know, at least 100 people, there were only 33 people on the flight, which was just crazy. And um, of them, I guess that there were only about 12 of us that, ha that were residents, that were non-Japanese residents. And we were the ones that were in this line getting all of our paperwork checked. So we had to stand there and then get it checked, and then make sure everything was there. And at this point, remember that Ministry of Justice paper I mentioned? There was one person who did not have that paper. So then that was holding the line up, and they were trying to see what we could do without that paper. And I was really interested because everyone told me I had to have this particular paper. So um, waited for that person, got everybody else through the line. We ended up taking off about half an hour delayed because just because I feel like waiting for everyone to come through that line. So if this continues, even as they're starting to let more and more, and more people in, it's going to, you're going to have to check in like four hours early for any flight because there's no way there was only like 12 of us and it took forever for everyone's paperwork to go through. Um, then we get to, we fly, we get to Tokyo. Um, everyone who has um, a Japanese passport is allowed to go. Everyone that doesn't have a Japanese passport or has to enter the country for certain reasons has to wait on the plane. Finally, they make an announcement we get off a plane. And then we go get in a line with a little guide. We get off the airplane. In a place where there used to be all kinds of open bathrooms and places where you could stop, all the bathrooms are closed. Everything has been relabeled with paper signs. We walk through and we actually walked out of where it's usually closed off and into like the duty free area, which the duty free area was all closed down, labels over everything, kind of like a dystopian movie going on because, you know, that's what we're living in. And uh, they bring us to a special site and say, sit here. And so we sit in these chairs and then we wait again and then they go, okay, Dallas flight, you guys come. So the, you know, 20 of us or whoever are in there get up and we go get in this line. And then um, we have to proceed through this place where we have to fill out a form. We've had to fill out a survey on our phones about what we're going to do during our quarantine because right now the Ministry of Justice requires you to have 14-day quarantine. So on the form you say where you're going to be staying for the quarantine, um, how you're going to get home since you're not supposed to ride any public transit, and, um, you know, do you, you know, are you, do you agree that you're going to take care of yourself and all these things? And you have to fill this out in the form and submit it. Then, um, you have this other form where you have to say where you were, um, how long were you there and, um, you know, circle all these things. And do you have any of these symptoms? So you're taking your QR code that you got from filling out the online survey and your paper. Oh, by the way, if you don't have a device, they have devices to do the survey on. And you go get another line. They check your passport. They check all your stuff. They ask you, how do you feel? Let's take your temperature. All right. Then they give you a little thing to spit in. It's a spit test PCR. Or not even a PCR. It's a spit test um, coronavirus test that you take. So you spit into this thing. And you give it to the people. Then they go, okay, go this way. Then you go this way and you turn in the form. And you show them the QR code. And they sit there and they look at it for a while. And then they give it all back to you and they go, okay, go sit over there. Here's another number. And then you have a number and you sit. And this is when you have to wait. And we waited probably about 
an hour and 10 minutes or so for the test to come back. And then they call us by number and we go through by number and they say, here you are positive or here you are negative. And I was negative. Woohoo! So I can't tell you what happens if you do test positive. But if you test negative, they give you your form and they say, now go through immigration. And then you go through immigration. And now is when the people come out to take care of you. So they're like, there's a guy, and he was like, okay, I'm going to be your guy. He says, let's go through all your papers. So we lay out all my papers, my original COVID test, my um, printout that I got after I turned in the QR form, a survey that I'm supposed to fill out, a, uh, let's see, the form where I had to say where I was and, and what I did, um, my information from my residence card, and we're going through, and he's like, okay, let's check your passport, let's check your card, and he's like, okay. And then he stacked it in a certain way, and he said, now, come on, let's go over here. So we went through one immigration line, and in the one immigration line, um, the lady looked at all my stuff, she asked me where I'd gone, asked me what I did, it was very typical, put my fingers on the scanner, smiled in the camera, mm, beep, beep, took my picture, logged in and everything. And then usually at this point, this is where you would go through immigration and get your bags and go, but she said, okay, go back that way. So I have to go back in, and I have to wait for another lady, and then I go to her, at her desk. And then she takes absolutely all of my paperwork and sits there and counts all of it, even the test from everything. And I was like, okay, at least I, you know, I worked so hard to get that form. And she stacks it and folds it and then takes it and then gives me my password back and says, go. And then I was free. Then it proceeded like normal. I went out and I got my bags, which had been sitting there for who knows how long waiting for me, hours since I'd arrived. And then, um... Went through customs, handed my customs form to the guy. The guy said, welcome back to Japan. And I went in. So that was a process. It took quite a while. It was quite odd to be sitting in the place where you would normally be doing your duty-free shopping on the way out in this folding chair waiting to get test results during a pandemic. Um, by the way, the person that didn't have the proper form they were allowed to get through. They had a lot more waiting and trying to deal and getting everything together, but they did get through. So then after I get out, I stopped by, um, to get a drink out of a vending machine I went to the restroom and then I ventured outside to find the taxi lane to take my taxi from Tokyo to Kyoto. Yes. I took a seven hour taxi from Tokyo to Kyoto because I signed a paper while I was in there. The back of that one card that said where I'd been that made that said I had agreed to not ride on any public transit. Well, I'm from Kyoto. I don't have a Japanese driver's license and I don't know if I'd be allowed to rent a car in this situation anyways. So I had to either A, shelter for two weeks um, in place in Tokyo for my quarantine or take a taxi back to Kyoto, and I'd rather be here near my family. So I paid for a $1,650 approximately US um, taxi to ride from Tokyo to Kyoto. So yes, the price of another plane ticket. Um, I have talked to some people who said, oh, couldn't you just like cheat and you know, just like get on the Shinkansen and nobody would know? And, of course, you can break the law, but that doesn't make it any less legal. Um, I would rather pay the money to be here with my family and to do it the right way than to risk in any way, shape, or form my job and my ability to live here in Japan. And breaking quarantine rules does not seem like a great idea. So, no, don't, don't cheat. Um... Yeah, but that was a long taxi ride. And now I am currently staying in a dormitory style room uh, near to where my family is. So yeah, so I'm back in Japan after being out for a week and going through crazy amounts of quarantine and strangeness. But that's life, right? Mm. So quarantine day one, finished. Only 13 more days of my mandatory vacation. Yay. So far, feeling good. 
Hopefully no coronavirus inherited from either Dallas, Texas, or South Florida. Which, by the way, I have all kinds of observations about why Americans might be spreading so much. Mostly involve mask-related behavior. Quite interesting. But I'll make another video about that. Have a good night, everyone. See you later. Man. <sighs> My brain is not completely awake in the morning. <laughs> I should probably make these videos. Welcome to morning after coffee in Kyoto, so I can at least think. <laughs>